So, you don't want Apple Studio to eat your PC alive? Then buy a new computer, Jesus. No, just kidding. If you don't want to cook potatoes in your computer, you should definitely follow these tricks. First of all, you want to make sure that you're on the right audio driver. If you don't have an external audio interface, you should have an ASIO driver enabled. This one has the most stable connection to your computer's sound card, which will, of course, give you better performance. If you're on a Mac, simply select the device you want to use from the menu and that's it. Before you switch between drivers, make sure to turn off your speakers or to put down your headphones, because loud and weird sounds can appear when switching between drivers. Another thing you can do is increase the buffer length. This is a total game changer. The more you give your computer to process the information, the smoother it will run. The longer your buffer length, the more latency you'll get when you're playing a MIDI keyboard, for example. That's a little sacrifice you gotta make. Now, when you're working on bigger projects, your file might get a little messed up. You can clean it up manually by removing sounds and VSTs that you're not using, or, and here comes the trick, you can simply go to Tools, Macros, and then select Unused Channels. This won't delete anything, but it will highlight the unused channels, which makes it easier for you to remove the ones you don't use. The next trick hasn't really anything to do with the sound. <laughs> the next trick doesn't really have anything to do with the sound, but with the user interface. If you want Default Studio to run a bit smoother, head over to the Options menu and click on General Settings. Set the animations to Don't Distract Me. This will make FL Studio look a bit more static, but this will save you some power that you can actually use for your project. Before we continue, I want to thank you guys for all the support on my channel. As you can see, I just started this channel and I think it's amazing how you guys are helping me out. Definitely smash that like button and let's get to the next trick. Head over to the Tools menu again and click on Macros. Find a Switch Smart Disable for All Plugins option and click on it. By doing this, you will temporarily disable every plugin that is not being used. Don't worry, the plugin will enable itself again as soon as FL Studio detects that it's actually needed. So you're not actually disabling any plugins. This can dramatically increase your speed and especially on an older computer. The next tip is gonna save your ass for real. Let's say you've created a beat and you've been adding reverb to 8 different sounds. Well, that means that you're using 8 different reverb effects at the same time. That's insane. If you have no reason for doing that then simply don't do it. Instead create a reverb bus by adding the effect to a mixer track. Then simply route all the sounds that need reverb to that bus. Here you can change how much reverb you want to go through the signal. Now your CPU won't overheat and heck you can even scratch the ice from your computer and have a nice cold drink. So I got it in later. Next, make sure that there aren't any unnecessary applications running in the background. Think about Google Chrome, for example. It's an, it's an awesome browser, but it will cost you a lot of CPU. And that will decrease performance in FL Studio. You can always close apps you're not using in the task manager. The next thing you need to do is learn about mixing efficiently. I actually made a video about that, so definitely check that out somewhere. Now hit that like button if you learned something new today, and subscribe if you want to see more videos. I gotta go now. Goodbye.